All right, for this problem, we have a special shield to block our T-shaped beam from radiation from alien spaceships. Okay, the shape is formed by cutting the shape of a T from a semicircle. Using the information given, the moment of inertia about the x-axis is closest to. Okay, so let me kind of cover the big picture here. What, what's the big picture of what we need to do here? Okay, but the big picture here is that it wouldn't be hard for me to figure out what this, the moment of inertia or second moment of area is really what they mean there. Uh, what that is for the complete circle. What makes it hard is that we've got the chunk cut out, right? What would I do if I wanted to know this, the second moment of area for the yellow shape without the T cut out? Yeah, so I, for just the semicircle, I'll maybe abbreviate that with SC, okay? We can find that in our reference material. Right? And you'll notice here that one of the options that's given for finding these second moments of area is about this axis that goes along the bottom of the shape. Okay? Ix prime, it says pi r to the fourth over 8. What's that? Okay, so the question was, what is that? Right? We are used to these second moments of area being useful when we take them about a centroidal axis because that is the parameter that we use in formulas like MC over I or like the beam deflection formulas that we were just using. We were always doing it around the neutral axis. Um, taking it around some other axis, all that does is if you might remember the, uh, the formula that all of these come from is that they are an integral over an area of Y squared DA. You remember seeing this? So it just turns out that the coordinate system that makes that useful for finding those i's that we need in the mc over i equation and the other equations um, is the one where our coordinate system is centered at the centroid. But there's nothing that keeps us in a formula like this one right here from centering it somewhere else. And that's what it is around those other axes, right? So if I want to figure out for this, uh, for our shape around the x prime axis as opposed to the centroidal axis, I just take this pi r to the fourth over eight. Okay, pi. What's the radius? Okay, 750 millimeters over two. Okay, so that part's easy. But what makes it a little bit harder is now I have to subtract off, okay, well, I won't do it in the same line, but in order for me to figure out the I of our actual shape around the x-axis, I need to take that I for just the semicircle and subtract the I for the T, but I need to take the I for that T around this edge right, because that's the edge that aligns with that x-axis. Well, let's go into the table for the t. It says it's a wt229 by 37. Okay. Wt, I think I'm close here. Wt229 by 37. Okay, when it gives me this I value right here of 22.3 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth, that is a second moment of area for that shape around its centroidal axis, right? So that means that for me, because I, I don't want it around the centroidal axis, I want it around this top edge axis. I need to use some parallel axis theorem there to figure out what that is. Right? So let me go back in here. I need to pick these values off. So 22.3 uh, times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. This is the I about the centroid for that, for that uh, 
T shape, what's the distance from the centroid to that top edge? It's also given here. Y sub C for this W229 by 37, okay, is 53.8 millimeters. Okay, so this is all information that we can get from the table for WT229 by 37. And the way we use it is down here to find this overall I with the T cut out. I'm going to take this pi times 750 uh, millimeters over 2 to the fourth over 8 and subtract off. Uh, 22.3 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth, but then to figure out what the, the second moment of area is for that T around that top edge, I need to add to this um, the area, and actually I, I should have grabbed that while I was there on the table too, right? Where do I get the area? Right here, so WT229 by 37. It says here the area is 4730 millimeters squared. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to add to this y sub c squared, 53.8 millimeters squared times 4730 millimeters squared, right? And by, by doing this little last piece over here, this is what converts my second moment of area from being around a centroidal axis of the T to being around that top edge of the T, okay? So we'll just plug all this in and figure out this value, okay? All right, um, pi times 750 over two to the fourth over eight minus 22.3 uh, times 10 to the sixth <coughs> plus uh, 53.8 squared times 47.30. Okay, and it just reports it as a number there. If you want to convert that, um, this is kind of where I think I, oh no, it does give it to us as a number to the ninth. All right. So I'll do it this way. 7.729 7 or 7.73, 7 we'll say, times 10 to the ninth millimeters to the fourth. So his question is, if the T was upside down, what we would have to do is figure out what the distance was from the centroid of the T to the other end as opposed to the top end. So you would take the height of the T and subtract the Y sub C, and that would be your length that you would use if the T was flipped. Okay.